uh, reaction mechanisms. And I, you did a little demo, and that explained very well. Lizzie watched it last night. Um, that explained very well what's going on in a mechanism. You, uh, you were going to break the mechanisms down to the guys who are involved in the slow step or those guys who are not. That's really the most important thing. The guys who are involved in the rate determining step, I'm going to have to have a mathematical way to, to include them into what's called the rate law expression. So that's going to be tough. All right, what I, the notes I'm going to give you today, all right, they're not going to make a whole lot of sense till I start applying them to examples. But let's see what we can do with it. All right, I'm going to try to turn this knowledge you have of what happens in a mechanism into a mathematical expression that I could actually do something with. All right, watch. All right, something called the order of the reactants is what I want to talk about first. This basically illustrates for you, or, 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 or represents, I should say, the uh, way that the reactant is used, whether or not it's used in the slow step, and how many times it may be used in the slow step. Okay, The order of the reactant indicates how each of the reactants is involved in the mechanism. And it, it does this in a numerical way that I can plug into an equation, an actual rate law expression equation, and calculate all right, for uh, a reaction. So whereas up until now, the most we ever did with uh, rates, of, uh, rates of reactions were just saying if something's going to go faster or slower. Okay, based on whether I'm going to powder the reactants or increase the concentration or add a catalyst. Now I'm going to be able to quantify that somehow. All right? And in order to do that, the first step is going to be to talk about the, uh, who's involved in the rate law expression and how. All right? So the order is the way it's going to be told to us. And let's talk about the orders. First of all, I could have a zero order reactant. A zero order reactant is not involved in the slow step at all. Let's think back to my, who was in the middle? Dayton, of course. Was Dayton. Dayton was in the middle, okay? And uh, I had Holden and both on both sides of him, okay? Holden and Bulkley are examples of zero-order reactants. Dayton was a slow step. He was the one who was holding everybody up, even though Holden was on the other side. He was holding everybody up. Um, and all of those molecules were piling up on one side, and then Bulkley's over here waiting for ones on the other side, and we're just watching Dayton do his job constantly. Dayton is involved in the slow step. He is the slow step. But the other two guys, they're not. If I gave a helper to either of the guys on either side of him, it would have made no difference to the assembly line. Okay? The concentration of that reactant has no effect on the reaction rate overall. Yeah, thank you, Shania. So the concentration of this reactant has no effect on the reaction rate. That makes sense. That's easy enough to understand. By the way, I'm going somewhere with this order. Where do you hear in math orders? What does that usually represent? What does that usually correspond to in a math class? Anybody remember? Yeah, Jesse. A second order reaction in a math class would mean what? Third order. What does it mean? Anybody know? Usually order, uh, you don't usually use, say, usually use the word uh, exponents, okay, in math class. But it's the same thing. And this makes complete <laughs> sense because if I raise anything, anything, two, raised to the zero power is what? Zero. One. Oh, wow. Well, not zero, one. <laughs> five, if I, if, I, uh, if I increase the concentration by five times of either guy on either side and I raise it to the zero power, I didn't do anything, okay? So... Basically, the order of the reactant is, is uh, analogous to, in a math equation, uh, the um, exponent. Actually, it's not just analogous. As you're going to see, it really is going to be the exponent. All right, let's uh, do a first order reactant. First order reactant, what do you think? Well, first order reactant is involved in the slow step. It's involved in the slow step once. That's why he's first order. And I have over here, and I, I won't be able to explain this until probably, well, in your class, because we have a double today, I might actually get to it in the second half of the period. I'm not sure. Directly or indirectly, I'll, I'll, I will get to that eventually, what I mean by directly or indirectly. But for now, just keep in mind that it's used in the slow step. Dayton's a perfect example of that. He was the slow step. If I doubled his concentration, I would have doubled the reaction rate by the same factor. All right, doubled it, tripled it. I gave him three helpers, or two helpers, or four helpers. However much I increase the concentration of Dayton, I will increase the rate of those widgets being made on that assembly line. 
Now, by the way, you're probably saying to yourself, well, that's not really true. I mean, bulk and holds it work that much slower. But remember, in a chemical reaction, a lot of times the guys who are involved in the slow step are like a thousand times slower than the other steps. So I, it, it really doesn't make any difference how much of the other two guys I have. It's the slow step that makes the difference. And by the way, you know in my analogy, I'm only taught not every reaction is three steps. And not every reaction has the, the rate, low, rate determining step in the middle. It really depends, and we're going to see all those possibilities. All right, what about a second-order reactant? Well, just like a second-order equation, it's, a, it's going to be a squared function. This guy's going to be involved in the slow step twice, either directly or indirectly. <coughs> So let's say I triple the concentration of a, of a, of a second-order reactant. What's going to happen to the rate? It's not going to be tripled. And it's not going to be 6. What's it going to be? 3 tripled raised to the second power, which would be what? 9. Yeah. See, a second-order reactant is basically changing the concentration of this guy is going to change the reaction rate by the same factor raised to the second power. It is an exponent. Now, as you can start see right away, <clears throat> this is going to get a little bit, you know, uh, complicated with the uh, powers involved here. But it really isn't that bad. I'm going to do a bunch of examples today, and I'm going to let you work on some worksheets and practice this stuff too. Now, second-order reactants have to involve the same guy in the same low, slow step. Okay. Now, that doesn't. That's a little bit more rare than a first-order reactant, and really rare would be a third-order reactant. All right. But theoretically possible to have a third-order reactant. But in order that, for that to happen, you have to have the same guy being used three times in the slow step. And again, that's not very common. Now, I, did, I ran out of room at the bottom of the board here, but what do you think, you could tell me, after, what do you think this next statement's going to say based on what these two said? What's that say? Give me the exact wording of this. Jesse. Same thing as the one before, except third. Exactly. Same thing as this one here. Change the concentration of this reactant, change the reaction rate, but the same factor raised to the only difference is third power instead of second. Okay? So just write that all in there. And I'm done with the orders. Uh, I know it's a lot to write down here, but that's why. You're now, now you see why I started this yesterday. I got the demo out of the way, and I got the beginning of the notes out of the way because I knew there was a lot to give you here. This way we'll be able to practice this today and get it down. Because <coughs> this is only the first step. This is just the orders of the reactants. We have more. Is there a fourth order? Again, no. Uh, <laughs> there probably are very few third orders. The odds of all four of these uh, three the same guy being involved in the same step, the slow step, that many times is just not likely. All right, um, But theoretically, yes. Theoretically, it's possible. But it's probably not going to happen. And you aren't going to see that in the, any of the problems. Fourth orders. All right. Now, we are ready to do the rate law expression, which is our mathematical quantitative way of representing the rate of a reaction. Okay. We need this. This is the beginning of something. This is, believe it or not, what I'm about to give you here, this rate law expression, you're not, it's going to kind of disappear into the background of the problems by the time you get to equilibrium, but it's still there. It's still in equilibrium. Next three chapters after this, it's going to be there. So you kind of have, it would be nice if you understood it now. Here is what the general formula for the rate law expression of any equation looks like. Rate equals k, a to the x, b to the y, c to the z, etc. Now again, the odds of having in an equation more than three reactants, you're not going to see it, all right? But theoretically, you could have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You, know, you have as many as you want, uh, but you know it's just not likely that's going to happen. You're going to see that reactions are that complicated. <coughs> All right. 
Okay. Now, what do all these things mean? Let's go over it, okay? First of all, what does the rate mean? The rate is simply measured in moles per liter per second. How many molar per second is changing, okay? That's why I have capital M per second. Capital M means molar, which is moles per liter. Moles per liter per second. And that makes sense. If you remember my graph, don't draw this, but this was concentration over here. Yeah, that's conch. And uh, down here was time, right? Uh, when we did the graph of you know, making a product or a reactant, right, I said it was the slope, the slope of that line. Well, the slope of that line is the change in concentration, which is in moles per liter, and that's in seconds. So it's moles per liter per second. Makes sense. That's the rate of the reaction. When do we have M per second? Or capital N. That's what we usually do, which is capital N per second. Um, a, B, and C are the concentrations of the reactants in moles per liter. Okay? How many moles per liter? And a lot of times we're working with gases. So, for example, if I put one mole of oxygen gas in a one liter container, I have a one mole solution. I have one mole uh, concentration. <clears throat> what do you think K probably stands for? You guys have been in the physics classes know what K usually means. Potassium. Yeah. Not lowercase k. In physics, what does a k usually mean? Some constant. And it is. It's the rate constant. All right? And like all constants, people, you need to remember this. Constants are weird. They usually have very strange and ugly units, and they're not something you can visualize. All right? Let's think back to a different concept we saw in chemistry before. Remember, uh, don't write this down, but remember the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT? Yeah. All right. The R. Anybody remember what that was? No. Point zero eight two one. What? <laughs> what was it? Do you remember the units for it? They were really ugly. They were liter atmospheres per mole kelvin. Yeah. Remember that? All right. Now, that my. I'm just. You don't have to write that down. I'm just pointing this out to you to show you something. A constant is simply there to make everything else work out. Can anyone? I can visualize a liter. There's a liter beaker over there. I can visualize a gram, I can visualize a mole, I can visualize a temperature in Kelvin. I can visualize, I cannot visualize a liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. It doesn't mean any, it doesn't make sense to me. And it shouldn't. It's not supposed to. That K is just there to make everything else, the units all work out. That's how the rate and the concentrations and the orders are all related, okay, as you'll see. And so you'll find that K is going to have some really ugly units, units that don't seem to make any sense, all right? And that should not surprise you when you get these answers. All right. Finally, we have the orders. All right. These x's and y's and z's. They're exponents. Remember how I told you a minute ago we called them orders? They are the exponents. They are the power to which those concentrations are raised in the rate law expression. Okay. They're the orders of the reaction. I just went over explaining to you how if they're involved or not in the rate law, in the rate determining step, the slow step. So x y and z can be 0, 1, 2, 3, okay? And if it's 0, you know what that tells me? The concentration of that guy raised to a 0 power, it doesn't matter what the concentration is. What's it always going to be? 1. So it doesn't matter. I can change this concentration as long as, hey, as long as there's some there. If I took away Bulkley, or if I took away Holden, the reaction stops. i got to have some A. If he's raised to the zero power, it doesn't even if he's raised to the zero, I still have some A. All right, good enough. That's some B. All right, so finally, about those uh, about those orders of the reactants. First of all, they can only be determined experimentally. And that's what I'm. Gonna, that's why we're going to have such long questions in the book and on the test. They're not going to be that hard, but they're going to have a lot of information in it because they're going to actually show you multiple trials of the same reaction and see what happens. Okay, so that's why those questions are going to be so long. When you go, when you look at the homework, uh, not necessarily for today, but when we get to the, really the determining the rate law expression, you're going to have to see the same reaction carried out like three, four, five times in order to figure it out. All right, and that's what you do. You carry out experiments. That's why we have two more labs, two big labs, much more complicated than the one we just did. All right. Oh, and here's another thing about those orders. 
you know, these equations, like an equation might be like A plus 2B plus 3C yields whatever, D. Those orders here are not necessarily those coefficients. They are not. All right? If turn, this guy could have a coefficient of 3 and be zero order. Okay? So there's no necessary relationship between the coefficients in the equation as, and the actual order of the reactants. All right. Well, I told you this would make a lot more sense. That's all the notes we have. This would make a lot more sense when I start to do examples with it. Okay? And that's what I'm going to do right now. And I have a lot of examples to do. Um, and then I'm going to let you start. I'm actually going to let you do uh, one of the worksheets and compare your answers and work together and hand that one in. That should be a 10 out of 10 for everybody. The second one you're going to do, the second period, is going to be one that will be graded. That, well, this one will be graded too, but I'm just saying you're going to have to do it on your own. You can't work together. Well, let's do some examples so you learn how to do these. Okay, watch. All right, copy that guy down. There's an, this is an example of a, a, a reaction. And I give you the rate law expression, and I give you the reaction. I'm going to ask you some questions about it. All right. Now, I'm going to write all these down, and you can too, so you can pay attention to this here. All right, write all those down. Oops. Too many. Uh, and then put a blank next to each one of them, too. So write all that stuff down, and I will explain to you what I want in there, what I'm asking you for. Okay. Because that, by the way, that's exactly what your worksheet's going to look like. If you look at these worksheets, same thing. Okay. You're going to have the same stuff here. You're going to get that same question. If you can do these three examples, I'm going to do. You can do anything. Are they all same right. on both worksheets. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one extra thing on that second worksheet. Um, you want to do that in the second go. period, but it's 90% that. Here we go. 90%. Yeah. All right, you ready? Uh, order of NO. What's the order of NO? Now, here's the first mistake you might make. Oh, NO, three, it's a th no. I don't use, no, get it, no, you know. Uh -huh. Actually, three no's. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, what's the order of NO? You have to look at the rate law expression and look at the exponents. The it's going to be second order. Because his no. exponent is two. The exponent is two. The order is the power to which that concentration is raised. You see it? I was uh, I was thinking. Never mind. Okay. I, I, I know this one. All right. Now the order of the reaction. This one uh, is very simple. Um, you just add up the orders of all the reactants. This guy only has one reactant. So if he's a second order reactant, he's got a second order equation too. The same. Um, if I had more than one reactant, I'd have to add them up, and I will do that in a couple of examples. All right, now, here are the big questions, and I'm going to have, these are going to kind of get complicated as I go on, but they're not that bad. What would happen to this reaction rate if I tripled the concentration of NO? Now, you have to, you don't have to think like this. It could just think of it in terms of math, but here's what that means. NO is involved in the slow step twice, so changing him by a factor of three is going to have what effect? It's going to be 3 raised to the second power, right? So what will happen? Everybody agree it's going to be 9 times faster? Right. Okay. And 1 half of NO raised to the second power is going to be what? 1 fourth. And don't forget to put that little times next to it, because here's the deal, guys. I'm not saying the new rate is 9 moles per liter per second. I'm saying the new rate is nine times whatever the old rate was. So that little times there is kind of important to put. Okay, let's do a couple more. All right, that's pretty easy one. Start off with an easy one. Let's do a harder one. Try that guy. It's not that much harder anyway. Write all these down. So 
So you see what we're doing here. We're actually making predictions of what's going to happen to a reaction rate based on knowing what I did to the reactant and what his exponent is. In other words, what, how many times, if he's used at all, in the slow step. If I know those two things, if I know the rate law expression, which tells me those things, and I know what I'm changing, I can figure that out. All right, so let's look at the order of NO. The fraternal order of police. You ever see those? What are those? Fop? You ever see them? They're like, aren't they like, um, I don't know. I'm assuming they're like clubs. Like the veterans of foreign wars. Kind of like that. VFW. All right. Order of NO. Again, just looking up here. What's his power? What's his power? It's one. First order. F2, what's his order? One. One. But the order of the reaction this time, I have more than one reactor. What is it? Two. You have to add them together to get the order of the reaction. Now, let's look what happens here. Here, I've got to think about what I'm doing. I've got to think about I'm doing more than one thing here. So, so what happens is you put that 2 here, raise him to the first power. You put that 3 here and raise him to the first power. And then you multiply those guys together like you would in any other math equation. Or you could just think about it logically. If I double the reaction rate because of him, and I tripled the rea that I tripled as well, I'm going to end up with what factor of change? Everybody agree with 6? 6 times what it was. <laughs> All right, having NO, one-half raised to the first power, and four raised to the first power, what am I going to get there? Four times one-half is two. You know what I actually get sometimes when people are, don't do these right? Four and a half. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Nine. No. But four and a half, um, because... What, what people sometimes do is, especially when I get two or three reactants, they don't actually multiply them out. They just leave them like that. So you can't do that. You have to multiply them out and give me a final answer. 2x would be the final answer here. All right, let's do one more. One more. And uh, if you can do these, I think I said you should have no problem with the worksheet. Hey, don't give us anything. Very good. He did. You didn't give us any. Just letters. Just yeah. letters. I'm just using letters this time. A's and B's and C's. Because it gets annoying trying to find real reactions. Yeah. I don't want to have to work too hard. Yeah. I'm overworked as it is. Overpaid All right, get them copied? No, hold on. Brackets are a pain to make yeah. understand. Can we use brackets? Uh, no, no. You, I want you to use brackets because I never really um, said this, but I, it's going to become uh, important, especially when we get the equilibrium. Brackets mean something in chemistry. Brackets around a number mean so you don't have to write out moles per liter per second every time. So I know it's a pain writing brackets, but it does shorten you up from having to write the units. The brackets mean moles per liter per second. Okay. Uh, whereas parentheses are just like multiplying stuff. All right, order of A, what do you think? First, everybody agree? Because his exponent is one. Order of B? Ah, B's not there. It's zero, exactly. I don't have to include a guy who's zero order in the rate law expression because what is anything raised to the zero power? One. And then C is squared. So he's second order. And then the overall rate? Three. Three. Good. All right, now let's apply these changes to that rate law expression. 
I doubled A. So that's 2 raised to what power? 1. I tripled B. That's 3 raised to what power? 0. I quadruple C. That's 4 raised to what power? 2. So what happens? Well, I can obviously ignore that one in the middle, right? Because he's raised to the 0 power. He's going to be a 1. 2 raised to the first power. 4 squared. I, what do I get? 4 squared is not 8. What is 4 squared? 16. 16 times 2 is? 32. So a lot of the mistakes you make here, I pointed out some of the chemistry mistakes, but you know what a lot of the dumb mistakes are going to be? Just math. Four and a half. Sixteen. It's because it's eight times two instead of being, uh, you know, squaring it. Those kind of dumb mistakes in math are going to happen. Okay? And these are kinds on the test I can't really give partial credit for. All right? There are problems in the test I can't. These are not it. You're either going to be right or wrong, so don't make dumb mistakes. All right. Let's look at the next one. I quarter, well here, do that one on your own, and I'll, then I'll do it and see what we get. It's nine and one fourth, right? Yeah, nine and one fourth, right. <laughs> so how do you four the nine? Yeah, what's the fourth of nine? What are you going to do? Just give up. Give up. <laughs> That's what I do. Look, it's nine times one fourth. All you got to do is put down what? Nine and one fourth. Not nine and one fourth. Nine, nine fourth x. By the way, both of these should have an x next to it. Nine fourth. You could put two and one fourth. You could, but I nine fourth. I would rather you just keep it as a simple fraction, so you don't screw that up as well. All right.